I was living in Alaska. Uh, I hate it. I've been in Alaska 32 years. Living in Alaska is great for the first five to 10 years. But after a while, like you have to be really, really committed to outdoors life. But if you're like me and you sit inside, like there, other than having no income tax, like there's not really a reason to live here. I'm not really a big fan of the winters here. Like it's nine months of winter. Also, we have no warm water here. It's all cold water. So like you can just forget about lake swimming or anything. Like some people do it, but it's disgusting and you get leeches. It's not very hospitable. Like, I mean, people say it has natural beauty, which it does, but it's not hospitable beauty. Like you can't really go out and enjoy it without significant investment in hardware. Like if you want to go snow machining, that's $20,000. Yes, you can do it with a $4,000 one, but if you go out with a $4,000 snow machine and it breaks down, you don't just like, oh no, my day's ruined, you die. Like there's a difference. Like there's not a lot of living here you can do without being like very well off or wanting to go full down the adventure route. Like that's just not, that's just not me. Like I don't, I don't want to go out for a three day adventure every single time. I don't want to do that. And I, I grew up where we went uh, four wheeler riding and camping and shit all the time. I have done a lot. I've been on a motorcycle since I was seven years old. I got my first dirt bike and I rode those every day. And then when I was 17, I bought my first street bike. I still own three street bikes, you know, and it's, I have Enduros and stuff. And I did the, what's called the iron butt loop in Alaska, which is you drive to every single town in all of Alaska on a street bike. And I did it on a crotch rocket, which is not comfortable for that. Like I've, al I've already experienced Alaska. I've been to every town in Alaska, including Kodiak. I flew to Kodiak twice. Um, you know, I've, do I've done it all. I've been fishing, I've caught halibut, I've caught salmon. I, I've, you know, I've gone camping for two weeks at a time. I've done all of it. But you know what I'm, I haven't done? I'm not 30, I'm 32, and I have never gone to a live show other than like one or two bands that came to Alaska. Never done it. I've gone out to the same bar a few times to have a burger and shit. I've never been to Vegas. I've never actually walked into a casino or anything to like fuck around playing poker. Like I, I haven't done any of the shit that most people my age have done. But when I went to San Diego, I was like, holy shit, this is part of life I've never even seen. Like there's warm beaches, there's people everywhere, like there's tall buildings. Like that's part of life where it's like, oh wow, this is like a different server I just logged into. Like what the fuck is this vibe? You know what I mean? That's what it felt like. I bet there's a 32 year old guy in Vegas uh, saying this crap about going to Alaska. Probably, and a lot of people do do that. And a lot of people go to Alaska like, I'm gonna change my life. And they come to Alaska and they burn out in a year because I see it all the time. They'll move here and they'll just stay in their doors all day because Alaska is intimidating as fuck. It's like, if you live here in Alaska, then uh, you either have the balls to do the stuff or you don't. And if you don't, then you don't wanna live here because the stuff here is not easy to get into. And if you try doing it and not know what you're doing, you will just get hurt. Like that's just the way it works. So it's, it happens all the time. Tourists show up here. In fact, I met tourists. This is a no bullshit story. So when I was 16, I was in high school and um, one of my friends had a, a uh, birthday party and his dad owned a cabin 80 miles north of the last road uh, in near the town where I'm at. And we, he had four snow machines and me, the, the guy whose birthday it was, uh, two of our friends and then the dad with the fifth snow machine, like his, his one, were all gonna drive to the cabin. Now, the thing was, in that cabin, yo, and thanks for the gift of uh, proper, that cabin is 80 miles north, which would have been fine. You can do an 80 mile through snow trip, but uh, you know it takes a, it, it, it's about 12 hours. But the problem was there was a blizzard. Now, the guy who actually was the one guiding us there literally was a guide for a living, and he actually fucking died doing the same trip later. And what happened was we went out and we met about six hours into it. And some of my friends were dressed in like fucking jeans and stuff. He ended up getting hypothermia. Um, and this story went terrible. We actually ran out of gas. We had to take all the gas and siphon into one snow machine who was the dad. He's like, you guys are gonna have to wait here. It's gonna take me six hours. I have to drive to the cabin. I have to get gas. I have to come back and with, with food and stuff to keep you guys warm. You have to huddle and just keep warm. And, uh, but that's a different part of the story. We actually met uh, this, this, this two dudes we flew to Alaska to see the buffalo. And what they, we looked at them, we're like, you guys need to turn around because they had, at the back of their snow machine, they had literal suitcases strapped there. And we're like, well, you can look at that. If someone brought suitcases, we knew for a fact that they don't know what they're doing. And this is all real, by the way. Like we looked it up in newspapers later, these fucking people died. So they were out there looking for the buffalo 
And we're like, you have suitcases. This isn't water wrapped. Like you're, it's going to get wet. All your clothes will get wet. And you also don't have gas cans. So if you're out there and we had gas cans, but we ran out. So like if you're out there with, with this shit and you don't have gas and you don't have waterproof casing, that means you don't know what you're doing and you need to go home immediately. Cause we were about 18 miles North and it's like, you can't walk through the snow. Like the snow is like three feet deep. If your snow machine dies, you die. So we're like, you guys, you're on rented snow machines looking for the Buffalo. Like you need to get the fuck out. Okay. And they're like, no, everything's fine. Cause they're, you know, a few hours into their day, still feeling good. They have no idea what's about to hit them. Well, a blizzard hit that day. And which is why we got fucked because the blizzard took so long that we had to find the path. We ran out of gas and everything. And we took us 16 hours and all this shit terrible and I, I feel bad that the dude's dad died to doing the same thing literally later um and it was a cabin that he built on the side of a lake that he had to fly that he flew and he had the plane he would fly in and built the cabin from the resources so it's way the fuck out there okay and um but these fucking people didn't listen to us and then we go back to school and we hear about it later i think it was like the next week or something that there was tourists out there that died looking for buffalo on a, on a, with two fucking snow machines. And we're like, those are the fucking guys. Like they, they, they were there. So it's, it's just like Alaska is cool, but you have to be all in. Like you have to know what you're doing. You, they froze to death or starved or something. I don't know how they died in particular. I'm assuming they froze to death, but it's like you, you have to know what you're doing. You have to be prepared. You have to have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of hardware. My landlord who lives, you know, across the street from me here, he is a tour guide for a living. His snow machine costs twenty two thousand dollars. Like it's just, it's not achievable. For P it's not achievable level to go out. There. You cannot expect to come to Alaska and be able to enjoy Alaska as a normal person. It's you can't do it. You need to know what you're doing. You have to have hardware. You have to have guides and all that. Now you can show up here and you can hike like hike like the Butte and these places, which are just like tourist traps where you know people think they're actually doing alaska but that's not alaska and if you actually want to do alaska alaska you need to actually be physically fit you need to have proper equipment you have to know everything or else you just fucking die and it happens all the time up here dude it's just my point isn't necessarily that alaska is brutal my point is more like if you're going to enjoy alaska for the purpose like the reason people move to alaska the bar is very high in terms of what you need in order to accomplish that satisfaction. Like you need skills, you need knowledge, and you need money. And you have to have all of those things. And it's like, I've got the skills and I've got a decent amount of the knowledge because I've done a lot of it, okay? But it's like, the money is a fuckload. Like I'm not gonna spend $50,000 on a boat. I'm not gonna spend $150,000 on a plane. And I'm sure as fuck not gonna buy a $20,000 snow machine. I'm not interested. And I also am really not interested in being code all of the goddamn time. So if you want to do stuff in the winter, prepare to be fucking frozen always. So it's just like, I honestly don't get it because in the summer, it's it's 10 out of 10 beautiful. There's nothing I've ever seen in the world that's like more gorgeous than Alaska. It is as good as it gets. June and July are the peak in the entire planet in Alaska. But outside of that, it is dog here. It is terrible. It is cold. It is dangerous. Like it is unenjoyable and if you're one of the people that just loves that challenge then you you love it and you know god bless you but like dude you know maybe i just want to live without trying to survive you know what i mean like i i they're completely different things are you planning on leaving yep i was telling my family yesterday it's like guys i got about three more years in me i've lived near my family my whole life on purpose i love my family a lot but it's like, it's at some point, at some point, I'm done. I'm ready to try and enjoy something else in life. And I think some of that starts with a different climate. And I also don't like flights. And anytime I want to go do an event like Vegas or anything, it's like seven hours one way. And I just, I, I would like to be able to enjoy some of what my career has to offer, which is meeting people and doing social events. That's a big part of why I do what I do. I would like to do that stuff. And you know, where I'm at kind of is the opposite of that. Would you rather do anything else? No, I'd rather die than do anything else. Like I've discovered what I love to do. It's not even the video games, it's entertainment. I like making content. I like live streaming. I like talking to the people. I like making people laugh. I like having discussions. This is what I want to do with my life. I'm doing what I want to do. And I will, I will ride it into the grave.